Good evening, everyone. Oh, I should sort my mic out. Really. I haven't done that yet. How are we all doing this evening? Is everybody good? Is everyone enjoying the rain? And all of that stuff? Friday night chill. Am I still a bit quiet? Um, that is actually up full. That should be working fine. And good for you. Uh, yes, you have to turn yourself up, I'm afraid, then. Um, how is everyone doing? We got chill, chill, Friday night, beer night. I figured, I don't know, it's been a weird one today. Um, it's been a weird week for me, in all honesty. But, um, hello. So, I thought... We'll turn it around. There was a lot of chat going on in the Discord today about battles and fighting and all of this sort of stuff. So I figured, why not just talk about that sort of stuff? Uh, so quick, we'll go back into the old habit. Questions, stuff like that. Let me know. Ask away. And... Um, I'll answer it as best as I can. Um, I'm probably not going to be streaming for the full time this evening. But um, we'll get in a stream in regardless. So, yeah. Um, I hope everyone is doing okay. Seems to be a rather... Oh, sorry, itchy foot. Itchy foot. So... Yeah, I figured that we'd talk about a little bit, we'll go into more details on battles and fights and combat and stuff like that. And because it's a it's a fairly large aspect of the game and it's things that I think a lot of people get carried away with um, and people are most nervous about doing. So, hi Abby, I hope you're okay, hope you've had a good day, lovely hug from Mr. Steve, yep. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, so I thought we'd touch on a lot of that sort of stuff. Um, classic question. Favourite battle moment in a particular battle? Um, there's lots. Hi Triz. How you doing? You look awesome in those photos, bud. Looked absolutely awesome. Looked like a really, really good event. So, yeah, quite jealous of that. Um, I'll come back to that question. Actually, I think I've, I've, something that I want to do is there's a lot of stigma around fighting and battles at Empire. There's a lot of stuff and a lot of people talk about it and it can come across in a relatively negative sort of way. And I want to get rid of that. Um, there is no pressure to fight. At Empire, you are not required to do battles, you are not required to do skirmishes, you are not required to actually do any form of combat whatsoever. There are ways, um, what is it that you think make the battles at Empire such a spectacle? Oh, that's a really good question as well. I'll come back to that one too. Um, four months, Triz, you crazy man, you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. So when it comes to when it comes to the fighty side of it, if you don't have the ability to fight, four months as well, Fonz Car. Jeez, all crazy bastards. It's great. I love it. Um, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. So if you decide that you don't want to fight because you aren't medically capable, you aren't 21 months for Helen, 
Um, and a hype train going on. Jesus. We've got a hype train, everybody. This is really, really cool. I haven't had a hype train for a little while. So if you aren't actually capable, physically, mentally, emotionally able to handle a scrap, then you don't have to do it. You can, if someone comes and picks a fight with you while you're not in a battle or a skirmish, because you obviously chose not to do that, you can literally just put your hand out like this and just say, I don't want to fight. And that will mean you will immediately drop to zero hits and you'll be on your bleed count. Chew, chew. Chew, chew, indeed. So it's a really simple thing and it means that you get you can get out of it and you can essentially, you can almost pretty much just walk away. And when you are fighting or dying or whatever, you don't have to be quiet. You don't just lie there and go, oh no, this has happened. You be as loud as you bloody well can. Choo choo, choo choo, motherfucker. So you be as loud as you can. You're in Anvil. There are 2,000 people there. Someone will hear you and someone will come running. It's great. So, yeah, so that's just to clarify a, f a, a few things there. So you get as involved as you want to do in this in the game. All right. Um, I have to pay Steve to stay with me. That's horrible. Aww. Um... All the bits, all the bits indeed. Let's go back to first question and then I'll come back to Peppinford's, Peppinford's question. Um, was it that you, no, nope, that's the wrong one. Favorite moment, favorite battle moment in a, in a particular battle. Um, my first character's death is always special to me because it gave me something that a lot of people don't get in combat and in fights and stuff like that. Um, I essentially got to pick my death, which was great. So the lead up to it, the plot that led up to it all doesn't really matter. It, it, that's not important. The part of it that was important for me is that everybody in the nation knew that I wasn't coming back from that fight. And I got to stand at the end of it with the I mean the monster crew, the refs were incredible for me. They literally stopped the orcs charging at the end and they had them at the end of the road waiting for me because they knew I was gonna go off and look for a fight and die. They um Um so they just waited for me. The Navar stood there with me, they said goodbye. There's hugs all around, and I got to run off and charge and die on my own. And how amazing is that? It's I can't imagine what it looked like, but yeah, really, really big thing for me. So yeah, that's probably one of my favourite moments in a battle. I've got I've got so many. I've I've done some really dumb things in fights, and it's great. Um. So, Pepping Ford, what is it that you think make the battle? Battles at Empire such a spectacle. There are a few things, in all honesty. We are in a lucky position where getting into a proper melee scrap is never going to happen for us. No, no one is going to be um, involved in a battle really in a battle where they're going to be swords, shields, axes, clubs, spears, bows and arrows or anything like that. So this is the way of giving a lot of people that experience so that they can reach out and and twat someone with a sword. They can actually get into a bit of a, a bit of a fight with I mean there's obviously a small amount of um, a small chance that they could be hurt doing it but there isn't really that much of a chance that they could be really properly hurt accidents obviously do happen and they have happened but for me having a thousand people 1200 people on a field split into two almost and 
standing there and fighting and going toe to toe, you get the adrenaline going. You're getting all of the that rush from running into a fight. It's it's an incredible feeling. It is absolutely an incredible feeling. And it's nothing that you really get to experience anywhere else in the world. I mean, reenactors, I would say do and, and, and that, but you don't get to do all of that sort of fighting. Level one hype train. Excellent. Thank you very much, everyone. That's amazing. That's so cool. That's really, really cool. Thank you very much. So it's that's the side of that's a side of it that you don't really get to see or do and you get to essentially for a lot of people they get to ignore their fight or flight instinct so you don't know whether or not when it comes to a fight you're going to stand there and actually fight or whether you're going to run away but you'll know that when you take when you are your character, you get to get involved and do all of that side of thing. So you get to be that massive damn hero that you wanted to be. You'll see people. Um, so you could be stood in a line, and you'll see someone go down thirty yards away, and you'll think, "Oh, I'm stood here. There's nothing going on. People can shore this up. I'm going to go and run in. I'm going to pick them up." And I'm going to drag them away from a fight. And I'm going to save their life. How often do you actually get to do that sort of stuff? You just It just doesn't happen. You get to be a massive goddamn hero. And it's amazing. It's incredible. You get to... Um, you can be the hero that you see in films and stuff like that. Where it's... You all need to run away now. I'm going to stand here and hold them off. Even if it's just for a few seconds, I will give you the chance to run away. You get to do stuff like that. It's amazing. It's absolutely an amazing feeling. Not even just like as your character, because you'll have that sort of emotional connect. But you'll get to stand there and, and as your character, like just do an amazing thing. I can't speak highly enough of that feeling and being and getting yourself to become a hero. It is truly an amazing feeling knowing that I I went off and charged this line and I killed their captain and that meant that that entire line ran away. You get to say you get all the stories from it as well. I guarantee that everybody who gets involved in a fight will come out of it with some form of heroic tale to tell. Even if it's... Well, there's no even if it is just. And it, it, it's always a case of I'm doing this. And it's an amazing thing. Um, when I first went to Empire, I didn't think I was even going to fight. And then I did one fight. And now my character is built mainly around fighting. I've never actually fought with you, Joel. I don't think. I think I've gone into a fight with you, but we've got separated very quickly because I tend to walk off and do my own thing. I think I've been killed by you while I've monstered. So, you know, we get that sort of fun. How are you doing, mate, anyway? It's good to actually see you in chat. It's really cool. You are missed, my friend. Um, it is one of the parts I'm most looking forward to. Um, it is my first combat and whacking someone with a foam stick. Yeah. It's a big thing when you actually get to when you're stood there. So starting off from the beginning, the very, very beginning of it all, is you'll know what battles you'll... We'll, we'll deal with the big battles, first of all, because they're easier to deal with. You will know what fight you're getting involved in. They will announce it probably... On, I think they announce it on the Friday evening after the, after the, um, the, gen, after the military council. All of the generals will have decided what battle their nation is going to go and get involved in, and then they're all split into they're all split into half. You will know whether you're fighting on the Saturday or the Sunday, or you're monstering on the Saturday or the Sunday. You then get to 
Choco Moco Latte. Hello. You get to um you get to then get yourself ready. So if you're fight we'll go with the with Saturday morning. So if you're getting ready to fight on a Saturday morning, you'll wake up, hopefully not hungover, on a Saturday morning, you'll come out, you'll have your drink, um seems to be useful, a handy board that shows every fight and skirmish happening with all the info on numbers and enemies. Yep, they have the two feet have that. There are a number of places around the field that have that. And you do find posters as well, most likely in the toilets. <clears throat> so you'll wake up on a Saturday morning, you'll have a drink, you'll have hopefully have something to eat as well. Then you start to see people mooching around and getting themselves sorted. That is when everything starts to kick in. That is when you realise that you're getting ready for a fight, that you're actually going to go off and get and be involved in a big battle. Because time in will come, they'll call a standing, or a moot, or whatever meetings that your nation has. You will then start to get your kit on. You'll get your armour on, you'll get your weapons ready, you'll put your war paint on, you will go looking for potions to be made, you'll get all of your little things done. It's when everybody else is doing it. So for me, where the where Hurst Hall is camped, and we start to get ourselves ready in the tent, we hear all the other people getting themselves ready. You can hear the clang of armour and that. And it's such a nice sight when you're seeing 400 other people getting themselves kitted up so for me as well, I have my unit that starts to wander down. So they will all be stood around the tent. They'll be waiting and we will all get ready. And I come out and it's like everyone is there. Just sort of, they are looking at me, waiting to see what I'm telling them to do. Which is it's insane, really. Um, fully concur with you on battles. Um... The real shift from reenactment, which tends to be pre-scripted, is the organic character-driven uh, dynamic and the ability to see people's characters really shine, etc. and get to have that special RP moment. Definitely. <laughs> Don't worry about it, mate. That is all good. Curry sounds lovely as well. Um, yeah, so you get all of that so for me when i'm in character and my unit is around me everyone's getting ready we've all got um our potions being given out and stuff like that and then the nation has wandered off but i've i've it's it's even comes down to having meetings with people before the battles some this would probably be the evening before where they're coming up to me and saying um Right, you, you've got your unit. We need your unit to do this. And uh, we want you to go in. So the, our winter mark is going in third or something into this battle. The orcs are going in first, just an example. Uh, we want you to follow the orcs in. They are expecting your unit to support the orcs. So it's really bizarre. Oh, Russ. No, you haven't missed much, mate. Haven't missed much. We're just talking about fighting and battles and stuff. So you get to so I get that little chat beforehand, which automatically gets me like really gets me going, and then when we're walking up to the field, and my unit is stood behind me, and we're all marching off together, and I get to see everyone else get all excited. So we march up, we stand off to the side, the orcs are there. I'll go and have a go and say hi to the general, so he knows that we're going to be supporting him. And there's hundreds of people just stood around in their nations, in their units. And it is such a great sight. And it's such an amazing feeling knowing that when you walk in, you are there with so many people. It's, it's an amazing thing. Um, I'd love to be involved in combat, I just don't want to hurt my already damaged legs, my leg damaged legs, I feel it would ruin the rest of my event experience, plus I want to have this character for a bit. <laughs> um, you get as involved as you want to, if you are if you don't want to fight, don't want to do battles, then don't, it's, it's simple as, if you want to experience a fight, 
then see if you can go on a little skirmish. But just explain that you have a leg issue, and if it starts to hurt, you might be leaving the battle of skirmish early. If it's a, or do the new player one because that means nothing to your character if you die. Um, in that one, you're fine. Um, so yeah, it's it's great. So you're stood there and people are singing and all of this sort of stuff. All the egregores do their wonderful bits to open the gate. It's all the magic is there. Then it comes to then like the first nation has gone through. When I lead my unit through that gate and you've got two pe two like lines of people either side and they're all shouting at you. They're really picking you up and saying, yeah, you make sure you come home. You go and kill all those people. Um, and stuff like that. So it's an amazing feeling. It is a truly incredible feeling. So <clears throat> um, it's it's a strange one, but it's great. Um, it's worth mentioning the game away from the battle is arguably more important. A lot of political magical wrangling occurs in that period. So those who don't take the field are thoroughly stuck in. Yeah, I, I will say the battles are 10% of the fight of the, of the game that's it the the bigger part of the game is is everything else um so uh hello disjointed beef can i discreetly vape wacky backy in the field <sighs> officially no officially no um am i aware of people who do yes that's all I'm going to say on that subject. Um, I will neither condone nor endorse any use like that in the field. Okay, because I can't. Um, but yeah, so doing all of that side of it, yeah, I see drugs only. If you want in character drugs, come find me. Um, so it all really does. <laughs> it all does mount up amazingly so but the whole other game you you can have battles have been fought because um a politician had fought so hard to get something recognized elsewhere in the game and that one person then needed an entire field an entire battle to be fought to get this the point across so it's difficult because i can't go into details about what's happened but these things do happen so you can affect everything you can think that your actions have the smallest impact but they have a massive impact in the field and they can really affect someone's game uh what's your unit called could you describe them and what are they what they're built to do so my unit is called Marika's Spear, after Empress Marika. And my unit is a line-breaking unit. We are literally built to hit a line really, really hard to smash it so that other units or the army can just go walking through. And we are very good at what we do. Um, occasionally, we're given stupid things to do. And we're told, hold that line. It's like, mm, nope. <laughs> no, it's not going to happen, I'm afraid. But, yeah, it's all part of the game. It's all part of the fun. So, um, yeah. So, but I have, my unit is essentially three units put together. I have a healing blob, I have a skirmish blob, and I have a front line blob. So, uh yeah, Wintermark's line holding ability is notorious. It's awful. They don't have a line ability holding ability. So let's be honest there. I think that that's half of the fun with it as well. Where they are such a big nation, seeing Wintermark and all of their new players fail to hold a line while it is so incredibly tragic and and that it really does create a lot in a battle the i have fought in battles where we have 
we've gone in and half an hour later we've won and we've left. And that annoyed me. That really annoyed me because I wanted to have a proper three hour fight and it to be a bit of a slog, but us to eventually win. And coming into a battle where we've walked in and everyone has just got everything really done really well and then going, well, that's that all over. Yeah, disappointed me a little bit. Um, so fighting against people who aren't great is really good fun for both sides. Uh, oh yeah, the last battle, the Dornish uh, room, we just chased isolated pockets of Druze, of 10, 20 Druze for an hour and then left as we just crushed them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, I just don't think it's fun. I really don't think it's fun. I want to have a fight and I want to really get stuck in and I want it to be ground out for parts of it. Um, so, uh, during a battle, what kind of roles have you seen or ways of fighting that have emerged? Shatter Mage and Power Monkey, uh, the Wheat Thresher, for example. <laughs> Lots of names are given to a lot of different areas of battles and lot, uh, units and people and stuff like that. So, it's fun when you are seeing people who have taken aspects of a battle and have really run with it. So there is a group within a few nations who are um, purely there. They've got staffs of Imperial Magistry, Majesty and they can, they can empower people to do a weapon specific call. Um, they can literally do every call within the game. So you can see them you can see them stood there and as a line just walking up to people and, just, and everyone just going shatter, 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 shatter. And if you've got 20 people calling shatter on one part of a line, that entire line crumbles and everyone goes running through and it will push them all back. And it's great. Um, so yeah, that's the shatter mage or, well, technically they are line breakers. So where I have... Um, Bear claws, so I can call shatter with two one-handed my two my mace and my hammer. There's a lot of things involved in that that really mean that you are fighting in one certain way within a battle. But when you get pushed to doing other roles within the battle, so like I've been asked, uh, we're losing a lot of people over there. We just need people to go in who can take a few hits. And grab people and pull them back. So I have gone running into a fight without any weapons on me to grab people who are on the floor and drag them away from it. And I will do that as the line holds and then the um, the healers are able to heal me when I come back and I go running in and I do that again. That's happened like five or six times where you've got ten people doing it, sixty people have pulled back, they form the unit and then they go charging in again. It's great fun. It really is a lot of fun doing it. So, um, the more balanced the fight, the better, especially when the barbarians get monsters, which are always on, which are always an oh shit moment. Yes. I was going to get to the monsters, but we'll touch on them. We'll touch on them now. The monsters are great. PD have done an amazing job with the monsters. They have very much stepped in and they give that battle their little extra bit of wow. They get it so that you can you can be stood fighting in a line and chasing chasing a line back as this lot, entire line has had to withdraw and you're chasing them down and then as you get closer and closer to them, they separate and you get a war rhino stood in front of you with all of its handlers and it just marches towards you and then you stop. And then you have to then take on a war rhino. Or any of the monsters for that matter. The, the Valorn, uh, Heralds, um, Giants, things like that. It's it's incredible. It really is incredible. And it all adds to everything that you're doing there. It's all about giving you and your character that impetus to role play a little bit more. Put a little bit more effort in or... I've, I've seen people when war rhinos have entered the field, I have seen people in their characters just turn around and go, nope, 
No, one of those things wiped out my entire family. I'm not fighting one. And they turn around and they have left the field. It's great. It's an amazing to, thing to see. Uh, who would you say are the most fierce nation in the field and also the most formidable, formidable barbarian? <sighs> most fierce nation? Um, orcs. Imperial orcs. Without any doubt. Um, they're insane. And they're great. And I love them for it. Um, after that, it's all dependent on what you do, really. Every nation does things differently. And every, na every nation has a different way of fighting. So, um, when it comes to barbarians, um, I don't know. The Thul, the Grendel. Yeah, they're pretty. That's pretty nasty stuff. Right there. The Jotun. I like fighting the Jotun, don't get me wrong, because it's a fight. But I, I, want, I like fighting the monsters. So the Thul and the Grendel, with poisons and with monsters and stuff like that, they're nasty to fight against. And it's great fun. And hopefully we'll get to do a little bit more of it. Hopefully they'll introduce another um, another nation to fight against who we haven't come across, who we haven't fought against yet. And then we'll say, well, we thought that lot were bad. This lot are even worse. It'll be awesome. It'll be really, really cool. The War Rhino's first appearance, a heroic winter marker faced it down in front of the line, was charged and every bone in their body shattered. Then the panic began. Yes. That was, I believe, that was the fight where um, um, the War Rhino's first appearance was met in a head-on march by the entirety of Wintermark, and the War Rhino just walked over them all and left a lot of people dead. So that was pretty brutal, that one. I was monstering that fight. That was pretty bad. It looked amazing. The photos of it look awesome. But yeah, it wasn't yeah probably wasn't very fun for them. Um, the Jotun are, in the words of a friend of mine, boring to fight and boring to play. They're an interesting faction, but meh, honor is a lot less fun for the individual compared to Drew bastardry. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Drew's Grendel, Thul, all the other nations. But I think we fought. It's because. We've fought against the Jotun so much. I think if we had been fighting against nothing but the Thul, the Druze, or the Grendel constantly, I think that that one odd fight where it was, yep, this is the Jotun, it would be like, oh, oh, okay. It's a completely different style of fight. And they're all great. They are great to do, be involved in. They are great to witness. And they are just a lot of fun. Uh, what I'm hearing is let's wipe out the Jotun. Oh, I'm like that for everyone. But um, yes, Fox Guy, you are 100% right. I want to fight the Iron Confederacy. I, re I need a scrap against them. I reckon in the next event, just spitballing here, I reckon that what will happen is it won't be a war against the Iron Confederacy. I reckon something will come up and I reckon there will be skirmishes against them so not a big battle or anything but i reckon we will get skirmishes where we will say to the iron confederacy we need this for a b and c and they will come back and they'll say but we need it as well for a b and c and it's like well we're going to be sending a small force there and they'll turn around and say we're going to send a small force there as well and it'll be like, well, we don't want to declare war on each other. And they're just like, well, whatever happens, happens. And that'll be it. And it'll be written off. And then we'll go in and we'll be we'll be greeted by 30 other people just staring at us. It's like, oh, no. And it'll be a very, very different fight. And it's going to be really, really good. Uh, more often than not, monstering as Jotun has turned uh, into, hey, run repeatedly at the March Mill block for our EMU which is just not fun, but other times it's been great. Yeah, the EMUs are amazing fun. So the elite military units for each nation, 
they are great fun to be involved in if you can or if you want to. You don't have to be involved in them. I mean, more often than not, I'll just go off and I'll become Orc Spod number seven over there. And, and I'll enjoy that because I run in, I die, and I run in and I die. But I'll go to different parts of it. So I'll do different things. Um, so yeah, there's lots of stuff like that. Uh, oh. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so, I mean, I, you get all of that side of things too. But it's, it's going to be... Yeah, Iron Confederacy... Um, but yeah, you want to do more interesting side of things. Definitely. Definitely. It, it, it's not fun when you get stuck in. I think a lot of times as well, the fighting is boils down to if people, so not, well, yeah, the players, be it the monsters or their characters, are a little bit more sensible about things. So I've been involved in and I've witnessed um, squashes where they had fought so well that they have pushed people back to the barbed wire fence and they keep on pushing them. And people are just stood there with their hands up just saying, you need to stop now, people are on barbed wire. And they haven't. So the refs have had to get involved. So there's, there's, there's that side of thing as well, which kind of, for me, when I've been involved in that and it's happened to me, it's kind of dragged everything down. So they've just said, yep, you're all dead. And then I've walked off and it's like, right, I'm not going over there again. And it's just like, you, you go off and you have to find something else to do to write, reinvigorate your enjoyment of an entire battle. It's a bit frustrating. Um, the Iron Confederacy have a great brief. Gunmetal, chain and Norman helmets with spears and shields is a great aesthetic. Oh, yeah. They're going to look amazing. There's a large um, contingent of um, Norman reenactors in Monster and they are itching from what I hear, to uh, get that kit out. So that's going to be awesome to see. Um, I saw there was a talk about getting a permanent site. Uh, what's a dream site look like for me? That's a really good question. When um, I had Matt P on, and we were chatting about it, I think for me, it will be a large site, bigger than what they've got at the moment with a quarter of it as woodland proper irrigation and places where so like parts of it has got proper concrete paths to it as well so probably like the main drag past the senate bar all the traders and stuff but the rest of it could be like wood chip paths and stuff like that that would be amazing I would like all of that. So with electricity and places so that uh, groups with real iconic areas. So um, like the bars. So you've got um, the Boar's Head in Varushka, uh, Lumi's in Wintermark, uh, the Song and Story Circle. So you actually have proper things built in so that people can sit down and just and think right we're here now this is all it this is what it's going to look like forever and this is how it's going to be looked after so all the lights will go up in the navar so the whole thing just looks amazing um i would like it if people were willing to pay for it themselves so that they could put in like a little shack or something like that they could build that themselves and put that in because at Anvil, we're, meant, we're the best of the best. We are the brightest, the bravest, the most intelligent, uh, debatable, but um, that, that, that the Empire has. So we're all there. So thinking that we're not going to turn up and go, right, I've got, I'm going to have my holiday home in Anvil, then I think that's a bit of a, another way of doing things. Um, and I think that could be a lot of fun as well. Uh, proper like in a simple way proper toilets showers and stuff like that put in a proper office built for PD proper warehouse built for PD to keep all of their stuff 
so that they're not relying on storage containers and things just to have everything in one place. That'll be an amazing thing. It'll be absolutely amazing. Um, I think one of my uh, a big dream for me is for one event is to have someone turn up with a hog roast. So like have Hearst Hall, we've got our tents and have someone actually turn up and deliver like the fire pit, the hog roast and stuff like that so that we can then do all of that thing. And because our hall is so wealthy, we can say to people, yeah, come along, play, pay a couple of rings and you'll get, you can get like um, a hog sandwich or something like that. I think that'd be incredible. The sky's the limit. I think if you can imagine it, you can do it. So like have all the woods with things like that, but it's, yeah, you'll have, so like, yeah, the Sentinel Gate will get a proper Sentinel Gate built and stuff. I think that'd be loads. The new Igera pot, uh, Igera pot line, plot line, uh, <laughs> uh, anarchy, yeah, the anarchy looks really interesting as a way to take a fresh look at the Jotun Falls winter mark marches. I'm loving all of these false virtues. Um, and everything that's coming through from any heralds or eternals and stuff like that. I think them as a whole, I think they are going to be Im amazing to see. I want, I can't wait to see what directions they're going to take all of this in. What's who's going to be the first um, empire nation to be wiped out. I reckon it's going to happen. Um, it's like my idea is that we're going to get, um, uh, a civil war within Wintermark as well. That would be amazing. I would love to see all of this happen. I would love to see the fact that all of the, the Thul or something has decided, yep, yeah, we're going to be over there, we're going to go and do all of this, but we are going to come for Urizen. We're going to go and wipe out Urizen. We're going to give them an absolute kick in, and we're going to take all of their land. So, essentially, if you are Urizen, you're a refugee. I think that would be an interesting thing to do as well. Because they they give us... We have plot where we're sat there thinking, how are we going to deal with pers like this group A, B, and C, or uh, people like refugees over there? How are we going to deal with all of these people? How are we going to deal with a nation that's just had all of their lands taken from them? Everything taken from them. No senators, no generals, no army. They're just there. I returned from the Eater of Beef. Excellent. I hope you had a nice meal, mate. I think that is something that I would like to explore. Because we. I think it gives people that sort of emotional role play to get heavily involved in. And I think it'd be a really interesting thing to see. I would love, I mean, I would love to see it. I'd love to see a civil war between Winter, within Wintermark. So let's all go and kick the shit out of the Suak or the Steiner or something like that. I think it'd be, a, I think it'd be really interesting to, sh to see. It will open up the game to very different ways of thinking and role play as well. So, uh, that would really shift things. So much game could come from that. I reckon it would unify people. I reckon if they decided that they're going to wipe out, yeah, displaced peoples. Uh, to, yeah, yeah, we're almost there with Urizen. I, I reckon that if they were to do that, it would give, it. I think it would make people uncomfortable as well. Because... I think knowing that, going in and thinking, right, I've got friends in, we'll just, we'll, stick, we'll just use Urizen. I've got friends in Urizen, their nation has been, they've lost all their land. We need to get everything together. I could see like a temporary ceasefire with all of these nations and just saying, look, you don't like these people. You don't like these people. We want to go and wipe them out. If you help us fight off the Thul, who have done all of this, 
we will then go and yeah, you will. We will give you X Y Z. I think it could be interesting, and I think it would lead to a very very interesting conversations. I think it would lead to a very interesting game. I think Urizen players would suddenly find that their dynamic of a game as a whole will change. And it'd be really interesting. It'd be really, really interesting. I'd love to see something like that. Will it happen? Who knows? I don't know. But I think it would be interesting to see. As I've said about 20 times. But yeah, I, w I would quite like that. Um, what else could be interesting? I think... I've done. I've been involved in a skirmish, which was a three-way skirmish, which was Wintermark, Jotun, and Valorn. Weirdly, and that was a that was that was a weird one. That was a lot of fun though. I want to see a battle where they do that, where it's like, right, Wintermark and Dawn and the Orcs or something like that. It's only a few, only three nations this time are going to go in and have a fight. <laughs> what a Valorn. I'll get to. I'll I'll come back to that. So they'll say only a few of you are going to go in and have a fight. It's a smaller number this time, but we need a lot more people for Monster. If you're going to be, you're either going to be. So we'll just say argument's sake with all of this. So you are going to be over here. Uh, you're going to be your characters fighting. You are all going to be Valorn. Uh, you're all going to be Valorn and over there. And you are all going to be um, Jotun over there. So you will become Husks. You will become Jotun. Right. The Jotun will go off to that far side of the field. You've got your fort. You're holding the fort. The Valorn... You want to hate, you hate everyone. You're going to fight everyone. You're just going to keep on coming back. The Jotun, you've all got two lives. Three lives. You need to hold this fort and you need to do this. Um, characters, you got your characters. Enjoy, have fun. But you'll go in and it'll be like, right, there are the Jotun. Let's go and fight the Jotun. We're in Liapavan. Let's go and have a little bit of a scrap. And then you go, oh shit. There's a... Uh, there's a couple of hundred Valorn over there. So you've got the husks and you've got the big trees and stuff like that. Um, and you essentially have this massive three-way fight. The Valorn are going to attack everyone. The Jotun are going to defend themselves. And uh, the Empire need to just take control and hold. It would lead to a really interesting dynamic in that field. It would be really interesting. And I'd love to fight that. In any way, shape, or form, it'll be awesome. Um, so let's go back to this. So, what are Valorn? The Valorn are essentially um, things created by Spring. Definitely not made by the Navar. Um, they're trees. They're nature. They have taken control. They have husks that they've bought that they stop things from dying, that they've reanimated. There are bugs, giant bugs. There are giant trees that walk around like ants. Um, the Valorn, that is that in a very, very basic way. Go to the Navar and ask them what the Valorn are. You'll have your ears talked off. They will talk to you for hours. Go to the Eternal Family and ask because that's where the advisor on the Valorn is. And she knows so much. Angry geography. That is a brilliant way of putting it there. I love it. So, yeah, it's... The Valorn are great. I love the Valorn so much. I absolutely... If anyone ever came to me and said, it's you've got to go in on your own. There's 20 Valorn in there. Have fun. I, I would live there. I wouldn't come back from that one. I'd just stay. <sighs> I'm so weird like that. Uh, what was the fallout of the Empress disappearing um, combat in field wise? Sorry, off top. Um, nothing ha official has been said about the Empress apart from the fact that she is missing. That is it. 
we are the there is an election going on. There will an election will happen to replace her, but that is all that we has happened in character. Out of character, you have to um you have to find out in in play. I'm afraid. Um. Excellent. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Wonderful. I've got to ban someone. <sighs> yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah so nothing official has been as really has gone on to on with it so it's a case of you want to know more about that you have to ask about the empress in play because um yeah it's a it's a really really cool thing um so uh Vlorn a fucking fantastic to fight remember leading a skirmish to track down and kill a gigantic Vlorn be beetle Finding it stood in some waist high ferns, uh, and the second someone went into the ferns, about 40 crew just rose out of the greenery. Terrifying. I think I was on that skirmish. Or a very similar one. It's great fun. I love it. Um, yeah, the, the crew do amazing things when it comes to that. Uh, the position is out for grabs. There's many candidates are starting to make grabs for the position. So the fallout will be a change of agenda. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's the best thing you've ever fought? War Rhino, Land Sharks, uh, Valorn Beetles, Valorn Tree, uh, I want to fight Kathan Kane. I think she's going to be awesome because I want a Frost Castle. Um, what else? Yeah, Frost Giants were good fun to fight. I've, I, if there's something weird in that field, I've fought it. I literally will go looking for it and to have a scrap with it. Um, uh, what does an uh, Empress exerting their power look like in the field? Um, great for her, well, great for them and the people around them. Not so much for the nation that they are exerting their power over. So the last Empress took over the Navarre army a couple of times. And while people said we need to do she needed to do she needed to do this, the Navarre hated her for it. That was interesting. That happened in my last event as a as a Navarre actually. So yeah. Um I think the next Empress should be decided by combat and match it in. Yeah, it's just not fair on anyone else then, is it? <laughs> I would if they turned around and said, "Yeah, the next empress is going to be decided is it be a trial by combat." I a hundred percent would enter. I'd be all over that thing. I'll be over it like a pig in shit. It would be amazing. Um, if you could have one new creature or enemy to fight be created as a one-time battle, what would you choose? I'm not too knowledgeable on monsters or creatures in Empire. Uh, hmm. That's a tough one. If I could fight against anything. A troll, I guess. Something like that. Um, I have fought against a... Uh, get them mixed up. But a troll slash ogre type thing. Uh, it was like a god creature in Spiral. On the Black Plateau, that was awesome to fight. Um, or anything else to fight against? A dragon. Yeah, I want to go toe to toe with a dragon. I know that there have been drakes in the field. I haven't found one yet, but I want to go toe to toe with a dragon. I'd love that. Uh. 
become master of ice and darkness and you can have a frost castle all of your own. That'd, that'd be awesome. Um, she was going to make sure the Navar didn't lose another M. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, interested to see what the Imperatrix legacy will be, to be honest. She made a lot of controversial moves, like vetoing the only dockyard to get through the Senate. Grumpy Freeborn lazy. Yes. She, yeah, she made some dumbass moves. Really, really did. She pissed off a lot of nations. She made, oh, she was Donald Trump. <laughs> or the Tory government, whichever way. A lot of stuff for themselves. Nothing for everyone else. So, yeah, there was a lot of stuff like that. It was, um, yeah, it was great. It was great. She created so much gain. She did an amazing job. Uh, the most mythical creature of them all, a horse. Yeah, I could fight a horse. Turn it into sausages. Um, the last Drake fight was uh, before my time. Don't think it was even killed. Just mulched a few egregores. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. There's um, there have been a few moments like that. Going back to a question from like right at the beginning of one of my favourite moments. It's There's a picture in the wiki um, of a young lad who's being helped up in a battle. And they're both staring off like that. They like and stuff like that. If that, if that photo, if they panned back, if they came back like ten feet, you'd have seen me running towards like five orcs to save that one, that that lad who was on the floor. So that was a Navar fight, and they, the other guy picked him up. And I went and start, charged the orcs to stop them from getting to him. <sighs> love that fight. Love that moment in the fight. There was also one with the Uras and Egregor. Where she got involved in a fight. And they were going away. And Uras and stopped. And they were all screaming. Because the Uras and Egregor was down. And she was trying to pick herself up. And there was a load of orcs running towards her. And um, it was me... And one of the sentinels from Urizen, we just went running past the Egregore and charged these orcs so that uh, the Egregore could pick herself up. I saved her life three times in that battle. It was amazing. See what I mean? These awesome stories that you get to tell. They're great. Um, uh, what would advice for dealing with and surviving the chaos and slight disorder of a battle or skirmish? From my experience, they can be quite hectic. Which is a big off-putting factor. Factor. Uh, adding to the above, how would the advice change if you're a frontline healer? Um, the people who tell, say that it's it's there's order and people follow orders and stuff like that and lie. There's no order in a battle at all. It's chaos. It's absolute chaos. You can't get anything across you just have to do it basically and if people follow you then great if they don't then they don't be prepared to be fighting on your own for, for a while <coughs> um, be aware of what's going on around you is a big thing if you're on your own and you're going to go charging in and you're on light armor with two hits chances are you'll die if you're going to go running in and you're going to you want to hold people off don't literally charge in stop 5 feet beforehand make them stop to give people a chance to run away so there's things like that um it's just a case of being aware of what's around you if there's no one directly engaging you in front of you take those seconds to stop and just have a little look to your left and right Use your profiterole vision and make sure that there is no one behind you as well. So just give it a quick check. A quick recce will help you no end. It will help you so much. It's amazing. Um, frontline healers, it's exactly the same. Do it quickly. If you are a frontline healer, do not heal right on the front line. Pull people back literally move away from the front line let the front line fight heal someone pick them up shove them back in 
go back to the front, grab someone, move them away, and that. So, um, yeah, so it's a really simple thing. Uh, the location of the battle can also make the battle. Effects like the Black Plateau, Valor, Miasma are great. Love them. Oh, I love them so much. The Black Plateau, um, I have fought there so often. I volunteer. Um, it's where Mac was born. Uh, I love that place. Uh, too much. Um, yeah, Profiterol Vision. Uh, yeah, Peripheral. Yeah, Profiterol Vision. Um, so yeah, those sort of effects that happen, a lot of they'll mainly happen on skirmishes, but when you walk in, and the refs have to stop you to say this is what happens to you as soon as you step in. I did one on the Black Plateau, and we didn't do a ritual on people to protect them from the curse, and we stepped in, the curse took on, and we all started fighting each other. That skirmish was over in minutes, and we all basically left. And we all carried on fighting in Anvil. It was hilarious. It was so fun. Um, but yeah, all of that sort of stuff. It's why you'll see a lot of people when they go into fights, uh, especially like with the Valorn and stuff, they'll have masks that will cover their noses and stuff. So um, I have not been paid to wear this T-shirt either. So, you know, just saying, throw that one out there too. Um, yeah, so you'll get all of that sort of stuff. It adds to it all. So when refs have to stop you to say, this is the effect, this is that effect, that's the effect over there. God, it's amazing. It's so much fun. Um, buy some frontline fight, have good cardio, have decent profiterol vision, and gain sense, for lack of a better term. Um, I have shit cardio. Um, I fight more than most. Cardio is good if you're a skirmisher. I'm not a skirmisher. Um... But yeah, no, definitely right for that advice. I'd say was definitely for skirmishes. If you're going to be front line and you, well, yeah, if you're going back and forth, you're a skirmisher. So yeah, it's the profiterol vision is a big, big thing. Be aware of what's going on around you. If the big thing to do is listen as well. If you hear a big roar that's coming from your left hand side and you don't look over, chances are you're going to get hit by eighty orcs of some description and you're going down along with everyone around you but if you look up and look over and you've seen that entire line has crumbled and you're the one to see it and you say they're coming from over there and you grab people and you and people start to look then you can shore up and you can sort of rotate the line so you're fighting like that you'll stand a better chance so it's things like that so i think that's what um in, you mean by game sense as well there so because at the end of the day with all of this it's a game it is just a game and your enjoyment means a lot it means so much so if you aren't going to enjoy it um then you need to change something about the game for you um can you tell us a time you were most immersed in everything, be it combat or post-battle or even in the field out of combat? Um, yeah. Someone died. And I found out about it after a fight. After the battle had been done. And they went in and they just said, this person's died. And everyone was just stood there around and stuff like that. And Max not great at a lot of stuff. I went over and put a couple of rings, a ring on each eye. And just sort of like, and instead, because Mac is quite pragmatic when it comes to death. And it's just like, we believe in reincarnation. I'll probably see you again. I might see you again. I might see you in the labyrinth. Who knows? But this isn't the end. So saying that and then just saying i'll be i'll be uh yeah i'll be here i'll see you soon get through quick and stuff like that and that was that was weird because everybody was like really upset and stuff like that and i was just like i don't know how to react to this so i wandered off and i was just really really quiet and then 
there's like people I, I found out later that people were actually avoiding me in character because they've never seen me quiet before so having that happen and me being that quiet they were just yeah we're gonna leave him alone we don't know what he's gonna do so they did and it was really really interesting but it was really nice i was yeah it was a really immersive bit of bit of role play uh, there's also when my cousin died in the field in a battle as well we carried her back through um, I actually wear um, something that she wore I've got some um, a ribbon that she used to wear so I'll tie I tie that onto uh, some kit I wear it around my wrist and stuff as well so it's a weird one um, so yeah I like that uh, if you could change, if you could change one thing about how combat is done at Empire, what would it be? Um, that's a tough, that's a tough one. I think combat's done pretty well. In all, if all said and done, um, I like being, I like things to be more physical. I perhaps would like, I'd be okay if. I could wear a ribbon to say that I'm okay with someone grabbing me, not by the throat or the head or anything, but just like, like just like grabbing hold of me or something like that. I might, I think that would be an interesting thing to see. But obviously, I know that with that, people would get way too carried away, and someone would end up, um, yeah, so someone, someone would end, it would end up in a fight. Um, so it probably won't happen, but. Yeah, like okay for grappling, that sort of thing. I mean, me and my friends do it anyway. Um, I've been rugby tackled by them in a fight, and it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. Um, they do it to me, I do it to them. We know that we're all right with it. So I think it's yeah, it's not feasible. Yeah, I think I've seen it happen where. Um, it's like I fought against this young lad uh, while I was monstering, and I and as when I, I took a swing and I hit him, um, I was meant to just hit his sword, but I ended up hitting him right on the right in the hand, and his hand went off like that, and he dropped it. He was there completely unarmed, and he was on his own as well, and so I just said I was just like I was like oh don't worry don't worry I said look just grab me and pretend to choke me out. And he did. And he did like that. Just like, and I died. And it was great. And it was great. So I've seen... I've, I've, I've done a few things like that. And it's like... My first character, I chased someone down who had stolen my weapons. And it was weird. And when I got to him and stuff like that, and he just, he just said... He, he literally just played it out. And he just said, I'm going to hit you on the side. Trap my arm. And then would just like pretend to punch me down and then choke me out and stuff like that. So we did that. And it, it looks amazing. It felt so good. But it's all very, very clear. Has to be okay on both sides. If you do something in the field and you grab someone without their permission, be prepared not just to probably, not just be ejected from the battle, but probably from the field as a whole. So really, really don't do it. I talk about it in a very controlled, my friends, or someone I've spoken to. Someone has come up to me in a battle and said, "Can I do this to you?" And I've said, "No, nah, I'm just I'm not in the mood for that." And they've just gone, "Oh, okay." So they start hitting me with an axe, and it's like, "That's fine, I'm all right with that." But yeah, it's the things. Um, so okay for grappling. Uh, neat idea, but yeah, not suitable for a lot of things. Technically, as long as a ref is present, grappling is okay. Yeah, very very technically. I'm normally when it comes to this sort of stuff, I will joke about it all and stuff like that. But I will say, if someone grabs me without permission in a battle, I will drag them out of that field myself. Um, and yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll they'll be in a fucking world of trouble. It's PD will just they'll be on you like a fly on shit. Just don't do it. It's I mean, all of a sudden, I mean, I don't want suddenly. A hundred people in a battle to go up to everyone and drop their weapons and go. Is it okay if I nut you out? And just start headbutting people and stuff. But I think that could be a nice thing to bring in. But 
under very, very strict, really strict rules. But I think that could be a lot of fun to do because I, I enjoy it. And my friends who know I enjoy it and they enjoy it, we do have that sort of thing going on. And it's, yeah, it is workable. But as a, as a whole skill set, be what I'd... Yeah, it's a very heavily flavoured RPG. A hundred percent. Massively. It's, it would be so difficult to write in. But that would be that would be the one thing I would bring in if it could be done properly. Can it be done properly? I'm the wrong person to ask. <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask on that front. But I think it would be a wonderful thing to see. Um... I've I've seen I've been involved in a bar fight, but that was all cleared, and that was a lot of fun. And yeah, there's there's ways and means, but I just think, yeah, you see it in the pit fights, um, and that. So, but it's just a case of if anything like that is going to happen, make sure everyone's sober too. Uh, it probably could be done right, but lots of people would ruin it by not doing it right. Yeah, I think for every two times you get it done right the 80 percent um yeah so you'll get it yeah 20 percent will do it right 80 percent will do it wrong and the people who do it wrong would end up with knocked out teeth broken noses black eyes broken fingers and stuff like that i can't wait for andy and i to be a brother boys and have uh <laughs> to throw me through a table have you got a table sorted have you got a proper thing sorted because It'll still hurt. But, um, hi Max. <coughs> but yeah, I think that'll be an awesome thing to see. Um, so it's something that I really do enjoy. I want to get a prop on. Cool. It's like sugar glass as well. Get that made up too. Make a bottle, smash that over someone's head. That's a lot of fun. It's one of the other things that I, I'm going to touch on uh, before I finish is... Um, Fighting retreats in a battle and the disaster that they are. Get angry about them in character and go and have a chat with the generals, captains, other people in character and do it. Because they're always a mess. I've never seen one done properly. I've seen the line hold, but with that, I've also seen it so they're going backwards, they're going backwards, but then they just come in from the side and they get wiped out. So it's a difficult one, that. Get angry in character. I've seen people having a go at a character. And it's not good. Remember, it's a game. No one in, well, not many people in that field are properly like trained soldiers. They aren't trained officers and things like that. They don't know how to control battles. They don't know how to con like to control units of people and stuff. So everyone's there to have fun. Everyone's there to be safe as well. It's a big, big thing. So uh, coming back to the topic of death, but on the raw side of things, once you die in a battle or out of battle, how do things work? Like, can you walk back to a tent and lay on the floor, or do people carry you? We'll end on this one, I think. If you die in battle and the gate is closed, you come back. Yeah. So, if you're in a battle and you die and the gate's closed and everyone's gone, um, fundamentally, we're not soldiers. We're, we're people playing, let's pretend, heroes. Spot on. 100%. So, if you die in a battle, the gate is closed, everyone's gone. Unfortunately, in that incident instance you walk to god you give them all of your stuff all your ribbons money cards everything and you make a new character on the computer there and then if it's been an absolute disaster like the winter mark versus the war rhino you had about 70 odd people waiting in god to make a new character you do that and then you go into the field as your new character and you walk back and everyone's sort of like oh you look like so-and-so, but you're not so-and-so. What's your name? And then it all just carries on from there. If you died in the battle, your terminal, and someone picks you up and is like, I'm going to carry you out, your terminal. 
You've done your bleed count. You are dead. You are you are going to die. Um. Yes. Yeah, I'm well aware of that one. They. Um. Yeah. Oh my god! I just insulted him so much. <coughs> You get to uh, witness your funeral. You get to have everyone say goodbye. And then you can get up and you can walk away. Knowing that it, it's essentially, it's like, um, I've bled out. I'm going to die. I've got, uh, they've said I'm not going to survive. I won't survive the night. I've got, I'm that badly hurt. And then you can, you can have someone put your arm over your shoulder and then they just walk you out of the field. And that's it. And it can, it's really emotional, um, if done right. Um, you can also just be dead and have people carry you back. And they'll lay you down and you'll get everyone coming up to you going, oh, I like this guy. It's, I miss this. I'll miss this, this and this and stuff. So it's, it's a weird one. So I got to witness my own funeral and it was a lot of fun. It was a, it was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, if you're a terminal, you can't walk back yourself. You'll need someone to help you. But there will be people there. So if you're lying, if you've got back into the field and someone's there, it's like, yeah, he's dead. He's terminal and all of that. You can say to someone, can you carry me back to my tent? Or you'll have your group with you and stuff. So yeah, you get a lot of bits like that. Um, some people it's made a bigger deal of. So... Uh, there will be a lot of people in the nation going, oh, yeah, we'll miss them, we'll miss them, and stuff like that. Or you'll get people who have died, their turn, or they've been brought back to their tent, and it's purely because they want to get back into their tent, get changed, maybe have a little cry because their character's gone, and then they'll go back up, walk back up to God, make a new character. When my first... I got married when I was terminal... <laughs> That's amazing. If I recall cool correctly, Wintermark is a good end for terminal characters. Yeah, you walk into the storm. So you literally just walk off. Uh, for the Navarre, they throw you in a field. You get thrown into a ditch. Um, and then they nick your stuff. So you have the unburden you. You just get rid of everything that's important. The other people will use it. So yeah, there's lots of stuff like that. But yeah, there's some great bits. And death, it's sad. Because you've made a character and you do get upset about these things. But you're going to get another character. You're going to come back on and you're going to enjoy it. You know the game a bit more now. And you'll have a lot more fun. So there's lots of things that you can do. I mean, I when Mac dies... I don't know what I'm going to be like. I'm going to be a mess, I reckon. I'm going to be really upset. Because I've played it for seven years. So... But yeah, but I think that when, when you get to experience your own funeral, it's really strange hearing everyone talk about you and you just got to lie there with your eyes closed. It's like, I, I've said, I've gone to people's funerals before and oh my God, I've heckled. So me, Mac and Nim, we have heckled at a funeral where everyone was saying, oh, this guy, he was so lovely. We've missed, we're going to miss him so much. He was great. He was, he was this, he was that, he was the other. And we were like, no, he wasn't. He was a thief. And it's sort of like, no, 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 no. He, he paid his dues. He's fine. He was a lovely guy. But no, he wasn't. He was an absolute cunt. He's like, we hated him. It's like, it's just this. And we just heckled. And they're just like, have you got anything nice to say about him? No, we're glad he's dead. And it was just like, yeah. Great fun, really, really. That was that was hilarious because the person we were insulting was sat like four feet away from us as we were doing it um, as his new character. It was great, it was hilarious. But you get all of this sort of stuff, so you get whispers through the black gate as well. So your character can be brought back to like final words and stuff like that. It's mainly done in murder cases, but it can happen. Um, that can also be really emotional, but it's a way of grieving without grieving. So, but that's a whole, that's a whole different topic, that one. So, um, yeah. 
I need to have a fight so badly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think we'll call it there. I think it's 25 past. England are probably winning by now. Um, so I don't know what's gone on there. Uh, Hello, oh, still there now. Uh, great stream as usual. Cheers, man. I feel like my streams have become Mac for Empress. Mac for Empress. 100%. I, I feel like my, my streams have become a bit more subdued and laid back. And that so um, I don't know what I'm going to stream on Monday. Wednesday I'm going to stream Sea of Thieves because it's the big um, Sea of Thieves update release with the cross with Pirates of the Caribbean going on. So yeah, so I'm going to do that on Wednesday. Oh yeah, it's going to look really cool. Uh, can we could we have Gartic on Monday? We can have Gartic phone on Monday. Why not? Community Gartic phone on Monday. Let's do that. Um, and then Sea of Thieves on Wednesday, and probably Epic Armory on Friday. Then, yeah, potentially Epic Armory on Friday. So um, I'll also uh, I'll need to talk to Abby and Pete about going down to go and see them, so I can do a video of the big unboxing. Of everything that we have ordered from Epic. So, yeah, potentially lots of stuff going on next week, which will be awesome fun, but still. Um, so, yeah, much love, everyone. Thanks just so much for watching. Thank you for people who have subbed, um, followed, apart from the person who followed and just turned out to be a twat. Um, yeah, don't do that. Um, yeah, thank you. Really mean it. And, um, yeah, everyone have a good weekend. Have a good evening. Um, <laughs> uh, is it worth... Should we raid someone? Let's go and raid. We've got casual. Casual gamer guy. Go and say hello to casual. And, uh, and stuff. So, but, yeah. Um... Yeah, much love to you all. You'll take care. And I'll see you all soon. Raid. Raid.